Vice Minister Gonzalez, High Commissioners, Ladies and Gentlemen, Bhatiya Samadai ke mere bhaino mahiyo. My Namaskar to all of you. Sabko mera Namaskar. I have come here to Mozambique for the second time, but after a gap of seven years, the last time I was here, I was accompanying Prime Minister Narendra Modi on his very uh, memorable visit in 2016. In the seven years that have passed, our relationship has changed very profoundly, and I think you all saw one example of it. Bhaiyom Beno, मैं याद कर रहा था कि मैं मुजाम्बिक सात साल पहले आया था और जो परिवर्तन आजकल मुझे रिश्तों में दिखाई देता है उसका एक उदाहरण आप लोगों ने अभी अभी देखा है जो ये पुल जो बुजिनगर बुजी नदी के ऊपर जो पुल जो बनाया गया है और जो हमारे जो संबंध जो हैं ये ऐतिहासिक संबंध हैं ये संबंध उस समय के वहाँ से शुरू हुए जब मोजाम्बिक जो है अपनी स्वतंत्रता के लिए लड़ रहा था और अगर पिछले 50 साल में देखें कि मोजाम्बिक के हर राष्ट्रपति जो है वो भारत आए हैं और भारत से हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जैसे मैंने आपको अभी याद दिलाया है नरेंद्र मोदी जी भी मोजाम्बिक आए थे तो ये कोई साधारण रिश्ता नहीं है और इसकी महत्व को तोलना जो है आप अगर कोई भी आप राजनीतिक दृष्टि से देखें या आर्थिक दृष्टि से देखें या व्यापार के का वजन देखें तो हर हर किस्म से मैं कहूँगा ये एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण रिश्ता है बहुत बहुमूल्य रिश्ता है और इसीलिए यहाँ मेरा वापस आना जो है मेरे लिए बहुत खुशी का कारण है उच्चायुक्त साहब ने कहा कि ये काफ़ी दिनों के बाद विदेश मंत्री आए हैं तो मैं अगली बार कोशिश तो करूँगा कि इतना समय ना लगे और मैं मेरी ओर से तो मैं आश्वासन आपको दे सकता हूँ सो लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन आई एम्फोसाइज दिस is a very time tested relationship it's a very historic relationship it is a relationship that goes back to the time when mozambique was fighting for its freedom and over many decades our leaders our people our societies we have shared a lot we have bonded very deeply and even today as we pursue our developmental path there is a lot that we can do for each other and there is a lot that we are doing for each other now there are very different ways by which i can describe this relationship the to me as someone from the world of politics and diplomacy it is the strong sense of solidarity between us that is really for me the defining characteristic but i can also put it in term in economic terms this is a relationship where we do an annual trade turnover of 4 billion dollars where indian companies have invested 11 billion dollars where for me what is perhaps as important or maybe even more so that an indian community has lived here for many many years and has made this their home and has prospered here and has contributed very significantly to the growth of mozambique now our task today is how to deepen this relationship in a changing world how to support each other in our aspirations and ambitions and there are many many things which are happening here and my objective of 
coming to visit Mozambique is really to advance uh, the progress that we have seen, uh, particularly uh, in the course of this decade. You all saw just now an example of a bridge that was built uh, with Indian support by an Indian company, which will change the lives of tens of thousands of citizens of this country. But I want to share with you that it's not, in that sense, an extraordinary example. There are many other areas where there is actually a lot going on between us. And if I were to look at what has changed over the last decade, there are water supply projects where through building bore wells and uh, distributing hand pumps, we have provided, uh, made water available to a lot of people. There is the railways, and today I had the pleasure of riding on a train made in India, uh, along with the transport minister. And I also learned a little bit about trains in the process that if you have a train, the manner in which it was made, it is so much easier for it to go up and down. And it, I heard from the transport ministry how much of a difference it has made to the thinking of people about using railways in this country. And, you know, it is a very natural experience to share for a country which for many, many years has had the largest railways in the world. Not just the largest railways in the world, but which in the last 10 years particularly has seen a tremendous growth uh, in the development of railways. Now, I mention this because in many ways, though we are located in different continents, there is much that we share, but there are aspects where we each are quite unique. But the challenges of development and challenges of life that we share are very, very similar at times. Transporting people, making it accessible, affordable, that is one example. But another example is a common challenge we all face about green growth, about protecting the climate. Now, I mentioned that we are today contributing to making water available to people. Equally important is to make renewable energy available. And it is for us a source of pride that with Indian collaboration, a solar photovoltaic uh, plant has been built in this country. Or it is even the talent. How do you, how do you prepare people for the workplace? How do you support vocational education? How do you give, bring out people's talent and skills in IT? So my saying is that if the country is growing in the country, it is different from the different countries. And the country is a different country. We have a different country जो दायित्व बनता है कि जो अनुभव किसी की देश किसी की भी अनुभव हो तो आपस में यह अनुभव जो है इसका दूसरा देश इसका कैसे लाभ है and this when we use the word solidarity when we use the word relationship partnership friendship one part of it comes from the heart but how do you express what is your feeling between countries, between peoples, between societies? How do you express that feeling in practical terms to help and support and encourage your partners? This is something which today is a very important part of our lives. And uh, as I gave you some examples, you saw an infrastructure examples, there are electrification examples. And 
there are today even in the field of security that if mozambique faces challenges from terrorists as a country which has itself been so deeply impacted by terrorism it is our moral obligation to be to help another country which is going through a similar challenge so often when people talk about foreign policy when they consider diplomacy it looks like transactions between countries and it can be but i would say particularly for countries of the global south for developing countries for those who have in the past shared the pain of losing their independence who have recovered it and who are today rebuilding their country and their lives there is i think a deeper goal and a warmer sentiment a stronger sentiment today that is driving us and that is very visible today between india and mozambique and my objective in coming here today is that the vision which prime minister modi has laid out how do we advance that vision and that vision is really a vision of international cooperation and it can be expressed in the manner the examples i gave you but true friendship is also tested in the time of difficulty and probably the most difficult time which any of us have faced probably in our entire life has been this two and a half years of covid so when we look back at the covid because there is no country no probably not a single individual in the world who has been unaffected by it it's also worth thinking because real friendships are demonstrated at times of difficulty who stood with whom during covid who shared what they had with each other during covid these are really the parameters these are the real proofs of what relationships are about and i can say with great pride that even when india was vaccinating its own people we had not finished our vaccination but even when we were still in the early stages of our vaccination prime minister modi decided that whatever we could do alongside that to the rest of the world we will do and as a result we actually shared vaccines with almost 100 countries in the world including of course <laughs> but i give you covid as an extreme example there are other examples which will also happen because climate change is a threat which everybody faces now recently you had cyclone freddy before that you had cyclone uh, cyclone uh, i think idal now our ships were here during idai we sent actually four ships in this case and during the recent cyclone one of our ships was very close to or actually at mozambique so how do we again stand with each other during these periods i think these are today the actions the policies the responses this is what when we speak about relationships having a meaning these are actually very concrete examples of how international relations is conducted how when we speak jab hum kehte hain vasudeva kutumbakam uska uska arth kya hai uska arth ye hai ki jab koi aur desh padosi ho ya dur ka desh ho jab sankat ke samay mein unka saath dena ye hai dosti and this i want to stress is the today the the in a sense the i would say the personality or the characteristic of indian foreign policy now many of you would be familiar we have assumed the presidency of the g20 
It's a very big responsibility. It is a very big responsibility also because uh, the world is going through a very difficult period. I had spoken about COVID, but the impact of the conflict in Ukraine has also been very severe, especially on developing countries. So how do we voice the problems of the whole world before the G20? Because one of the experiences we have seen in the last year is that the, a lot of countries are looking at problems from their own very limited perspective. So this very thinking that I spoke about during COVID or during sharing development, sharing experiences, standing with each other during humanitarian crisis or disasters, that same thinking today is also visible in how we have approached the G20. That we are the first G20 president who consulted 125 other countries, starting with Prime Minister Modi himself doing many of these meetings. And we were very honored that from Mozambique, President Yusi put forward the concerns of this country. Uh, and <laughs> this exercise of consulting 125 countries today gives us a much stronger position going into G20 and telling the rest of the world, saying India today speaks not just for itself. We may be the most populous country in the world, but we also speak for another 125 countries at least. Now, I have arrived today और आप लोगों के मन में होगा जो हमारे समुदाय के हैं कि देश से आप क्या खबर लाए कोई भी भारत से आएगा तो वो वो तो स्वाभाविक है कि आप ये पूछेंगे तो मैं आपको बताना चाहता हूं कि आज जो है देश में एक बहुत बड़ा परिवर्तन है और ये परिवर्तन जो है ये आप इसको अलग अलग पहलुओं में देख सकते हैं अलग अलग विषयों में देख सकते हैं ये इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर हो डिजिटल डिलीवरी हो हमारे पिछले सालों में इतने सारे योजनाएं जो हैं उन्होंने करोड़ों में आम माने सामान्य नागरिक के लिए उनका जीवन जो है उसको बिल्कुल बदल दिया और ये परिवर्तन जो है एक तो इसकी संख्या जो है इतनी बड़ी है और जो फर्क जो लोगों के जीवन में पड़ा है ये माने बहुत ही मैं कहूँगा बहुत बेसिक चीज है कि महामारी के समय में लोग चिंतित थे कि उनका खाना का क्या होगा राशन कहाँ से आएगा जिनकी रोजगारी उस समय गई उनके मन में था कि अब गुजारा कैसे हो पैसे कहाँ से आएंगे और उस समय ये नया भारत का एक किस्म से मैं कहूँगा पहचान कि हम जो पूरे देश में जो कर पाए और ये टेक्नोलॉजी के माध्यम से कर पाए कि 80 करोड़ों 80 करोड़ आबादी को हम जो हैं 2020 से बिना कोई बिना कोई दिक्कत से हम लोग उनको हर महीने राशन कर पाए 80 करोड़ माने पूरा यूरोप और अमेरिका की आबादी अगर आप पूरा मिला लें उससे ज़्यादा और करीब Uh, मैं कहूंगा 40 करोड़ से ज्यादा उनके बैंक अकाउंट में जो है उनके बैंक अकाउंट में सरकार जो है पैसे डाल रही है ताकि जो जिनकी आमदनी कम हो या जो उस समय बिना रोजगार के हो उनको कम से कम उतना तो मिल जाए ताकि उनका रोज का गुजारा हो सो आई वॉन्ट टू शेयर विद आर फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम मुजाफ्र द 
that during the COVID, we have actually used the digital medium to deliver benefits to people on a scale which is really worth contemplating. That 800 million people were getting food from the government so that nobody's, nobody had to go hungry. And this was a, a promise that Prime Minister Modi made to himself, that during his, his tenure, this will never happen to anybody during the COVID. And that more than 400 million people actually were getting money paid into their bank accounts. So that they didn't have to worry because the informal economy particularly was very severely disrupted. But it is not only what is happening during COVID. If you see what is the basic rights of a citizen, what is their expectation? What is, what is it that they feel entitled to? Today it is housing, it is water, it is piped water at homes, it is electricity at homes, it is pension, it is insurance. Each one of this is being delivered in hundreds of millions because today's India has the digital ability and the governance capability but most of all the leadership and vision to do this. This is the change which all Indians, I think particularly those living outside India, should appreciate. Now, uh, we speak, aap logo ne suna hoga ki aaj kal kuch saalon se hum log jo hain atma nirbhar bharat ki baat kar rahe We are speaking about a self-reliant India. I also want you to understand Atma Nirbhar is not a slogan. This con our country used to live on slogans before. That era is now over. When we speak of Atma Nirbhar Bharat, it is actually an India which is capable of doing things, of thinking its own solution, of making its own product, of finding its own invention. And this examples we have seen during COVID. Many people thought at the beginning, yes, maybe vaccine will come. Maybe vaccine will come, we will have to wait our turn. For decades we have waited our turn, usually it's at the end of the queue. This time we were among the, not just the earliest to produce, we also invented our own vaccine. So you not only had made in India vaccine, you also had invented in India vaccine. But I telecom. We have heard 3G, 4G, 2G, 3G, 4G. We struggled with 2G and 3G, importing it from outside. Today, India is deploying its own 5G, which is being rolled out in multiple cities. So, when we speak about self-reliance, it is not about building a wall between the country and the world. It is actually believing in your own people, motivating them to come up with what actually their talent can do. Supporting them where it is necessary. And sometimes when you are in a very difficult situation, actually thinking through your own solution. Now, during COVID, uh, as a minister, uh, I am a member of a group of, small group of ministers who deal with economic issues. During COVID, there was also a special group of ministers who were dealing with COVID. I was a member of that also. Now, we used to get advice from everywhere in the world saying, you know, to deal with COVID, you have to put, give money, you have to have a big stimulus package, you have to give money to companies who will then uh, find ways of saving the economy. 
Prime Minister Modi listened to everybody. Then he did what he thought was the right solution. And to me, that was example of Atmanirbhar Bharat, which was that he was focused on how to actually get benefits to citizens on the ground and the programs I spoke to you about, the how to get food through Anna Yojana, how to get money into people's bank account through a Garib Kalyan Yojana. These were thinking through your own solutions rather than following the model of other people. Rather than getting advice from people whose environment may be very different. This is really what Atma Nirbhar Bharat is about. So, the message that I bring to all of you, particularly the members of the Indian community, but I also say this to our Mozambican friends there are big changes happening in India, changes which are putting India on a very different growth trajectory. Today, we are the third largest, fifth largest economy, but we are the large economy with the highest growth rate and the highest forecasted growth rate for decades to come. And why I mention this, why I mention this is many of our experiences, a lot of our capabilities on the scale and the cost at which it is done, I think would be of relevance to our friends and partners. And what perhaps separates India from other countries, even when we, when we uh, look at doing things together. In 2018, when Prime Minister Modi was visiting Uganda, he gave a very important speech in Kampala, which was addressed, obviously, to the Ugandan parliament, but it had application for all African countries, in fact, for all developing countries, where he basically said that we will be guided by what are the priorities and the interests of our partners that we will ask you, saying, you please tell us what is important for, for you. And if we can do it, if we have something there which is of value to you, we will be very honored to do it. So what has defined India's growing relationship today with Africa, and which is very, very visible in Mozambique, because you are, Mozambique is among our most important and substantive relationships in Africa, is whatever we are doing, even, even the train ride that I took today, the, the train was, in a sense, made for the requirements of the Mozambican Rail. I think even the specifications were changed for that. So that is really the value that India brings. And, and I think that has given us today a very different standing uh, in the world. As I said, we are, we have always been a very independent minded country. At a time when things are quite difficult in the world, uh, when, when situation requires it, it is important also to stand up and assert uh, what is our right, what is our interest. And again, as I said, we do this not just for ourselves. We do it today because we are conscious that we belong to a fraternity of countries whose progress depends on each other. And therefore, uh, for us, uh, this relationship has a very, very special significance. So that is part of the reason why I am here today. Uh, I am here carrying a message from Prime Minister Modi that India is ready today to take this relationship to a new level. But while we do all that, I also want to say to the uh, Indian community that if the world, the world is today having a very different view of India. It is a view 
partly economic, partly technology, what we have done on digital. To some extent, it is also influenced by what is our cultural, cultural messaging. I think the International Day of Yoga has had a great impact. Right now, we are promoting International Year of Millets, which is why High Commissioner has kept millets right at the entrance for all of you to see. I think hopefully at dinner also. Uh, but finally, the image of India is made by Indians, not just by the Indian government. Because foreign countries, foreign leaders, foreign citizens, everybody when they think of a country has a person, a face that they put, an experience that they put. So when the Indian community does well anywhere, the biggest beneficial is the relationship between India and that country. And a lot today, the warmth that and the, the, the strength of the relationship today that we have in Mozambique, a lot of that is actually due to all of you. It is actually your contributions, I think particularly those who have lived here for a long time, but also those who have come here more recently to those who have invested here, but to those who produce here, to those who trade out here, to those in different ways who contribute to the uh, progress and development of this society. That it is your image, your, I would say, uh, impression that you have uh, left, which actually makes my task easy. So I am here in many ways to thank you. Because very, very few foreign ministers in the world can say that they have as much community support across the world as I can. So really, I, I thank you, High Commissioner. I thank all members of the community. I thank our colleagues and friends from the government of Mozambique. Uh, all our well-wishers uh, that you have spent time, you have joined us today. Uh, and I am very confident that in the meetings I will be doing in the course of the next two days, uh, we will be discussing ways and uh, means how to take this relationship to a higher level. Uh, and uh, uh, my last visit, as I said, when you you know when you come with prime minister, you kind of go through countries so fast uh, that uh, it's not always possible. Uh, to spend time and to, to really uh, appreciate uh, a lot of uh, what the community has done here. This time I think I will have uh, hopefully a little bit uh, more uh, uh, time on my hands. I uh, expect to see some of you in different places. I think I've already met some of you uh, earlier in the evening. Uh, so once again I want to say what a great pleasure it is to be with all of you. Uh, many, many. Thanks.